G'day guys and welcome back tonight to another Campaign Cartographer 3 Plus video. So tonight we're going to be having a look at the custom sheets um, and basically why naming them is important. Uh, for anyone who's new to the tool you've probably recognized uh, that sheets um, should be quite important um, and sometimes when you place symbols and you refresh they disappear. So let's jump over to Campaign Cartographer, let's have a look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so in front of me, you can see I've got a blank slate open on Campaign Cartographer 3. Uh, I've got the, um, I think it's uh, one of the dungeon styles open at the moment. And basically what we're going to be able to do is go through and sort of just test um, and play around and show you how sort of things interact. So on your left here, this is your symbols panel. Uh, you can basically click into here to select a symbol and place it on the map. So let's do that. Let's zoom right in. Let's just make sure that we're set normal. Let's put a chest down. Okay, so that chest is now on the map. Um, and if I click the refresh button, obviously it, it stays on the map. Okay, so that's that's working as, uh, as expected. Now, once you start getting more things, uh, things start to get a little bit trickier. So let's have a look at, for example, a floor style. If we put a section of floor, don't have a grid drawn. There we go. And we click refresh. You can see that the floor is now underneath the chest. So it's important to understand why that is occurring. And if we come up here and have a look at the symbols button, or we click over here and that this button will do the same thing. We can click that to open it up. And what we see is basically a list of symbols that sort of sound familiar to what we're, we're playing around with, right? So we've got a floor and we've got symbols that we've put on the floor. Anything at the top is going to be at the back of the map, sort of underneath everything. Everything at the bottom is going to be on top. So symbols will always be on top of the floor. And just to show you this, if we move this up, click OK, it's disappeared. Now that is still there. So let me just show you that. The chest is still there. All right. It's literally because the symbols or the sheets, sorry, um, have determined what's on top of each other. So in this here, the floors are on top of the symbols. If we move that back down again, we can see that the symbols are now on top of the floor. So it's a pretty simple premise and it's incredibly powerful once you get your head around that this is the way it works. But it gets a little bit more complex than that because once you've got like 16,000 assets on a map and things are all over the place and you know you've learned how to control this yourself and you're manipulating where you want the actual symbols to go and you're creating new sheets and you're putting things on top of each other, it all starts to get quite confusing. And there's going to be situations where you come along and you want to place a symbol and you think it should do something other than what it does. Okay, so it's a pretty simple premise, um, but you'll understand once I sort of show you some examples, I guess. All right, so I'm going to put another symbol here. And if we refresh, we'll have a look at what that does. All right, because I've put this one on top of the other symbol and they're both on the same sheet, they're going to basically covered the way that I put them down. Now I keep talking about the fact that they're on the same sheet. I just like to just take some time to show you guys uh, how to determine what sheet they're on just in case you're ever confused. There's a really powerful function called list. You can come in here and type list down the bottom left, press enter and it says select entities zero picked. All right always read down here always no matter what you're doing. So I'm going to select the entities. I'm going to just drag a box over these two. Then I'm going to right click and do it. And this box opens up. Now this box is a godsend and I can't believe I didn't use this for as long as I didn't use it. Um, it says that I've got two symbols selected. All right, you've got single re symbol reference and symbol reference. You can see that they're basically on the layer 265. They're on the background floor one layer, which is okay. And if we go through and we have a look, we should be able to determine what sheets they're on. And yes, we can. They're both on the sheet symbol. All right, so let's change that. Let's put this one here on the track symbol. 
So, based on our understanding, we've put on the track symbol, that's underneath the symbol symbol, but above the floor symbol, what's going to happen? The book is going to go underneath that chest. All right, just like that, which it did. And if we do our list again, and we select these two, and right click, do it, we can see that we now have two different selections of sheets. We've got symbols and we've got tracks, and we can see some detail about these as they are. So that's sort of the basic nitty grittiness of it, which is fantastic. But as you're placing these symbols, you will start to notice that they go onto the sheet that they want to go onto. So if I select, for example, the text sheet, I've got it active as the text sheet. A lot of the new guys come along and go, well, if I put these scrolls down, they should go on the text sheet. All right, let's see what happens. I put down the scrolls, I escape, I'm gonna type list, I'm going to select the scrolls, right click do it, and what sheet did they go onto? They went onto the symbol sheet. Okay, why? We had the text sheet selected. You know, why didn't they go onto the text sheet? I wanted them on the text sheet, that's where they should go. I had that selected. Now, for you new guys, this probably sounds like, you know, something that's quite frustrating and not working the way you think it should work. Trust me when I say this is an amazing feature. Okay, this program gives you the full ability to control what sheets that things are going on to. Um, and it also is designed in a way to sort of try and help you um, get a better outcome once you're a lot faster and you're working a lot more efficiently and you're not thinking about these things because the symbols go onto the sheets that they're meant to be going onto. So to explain why this is happening, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the symbol manager. All right, we can see the symbol manager here. And this sort of uh, gives us an idea of all the symbols that are on the map. And if we go edit, no, not edit. I think I'm actually in the wrong spot, to be honest. I think it's the symbol options. No, I don't come into this very often. Here we go. No. You should probably just ignore me at this stage, you know, like this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. I'm sure there's an option into here. There we go. All right, so let's just do that again, because obviously I just, you know, I was in the right place, but um, there are two different places you can do this. We're going symbols, we're going symbol manager, and this is a list of all the symbols that we have in our map. So we're going to look at these scrolls in this case, we're clicking on it. We're going to go options. All right, and we can see here that basically it's got four sheet ticked and it's got symbols, but then at the end, it's got this little asterisk. It's the asterisk that is the most important piece. The asterisk is a, um, it's just basically a wild card. It's saying, I want you to go on the symbol sheet. Okay. But if you have a symbol sheet with something else written behind it, you can also go on that. All right, and this is the bit that's really important. So it doesn't matter what we do, it's always gonna go on the symbol sheet, no matter what we have selected, all right? Unless we add a new sheet called symbols higher. And what I can do here is I can move this up to be uh, above the symbols. All right, and I can have that selected. And when I come in here and I select my my scrolls this time, I can put them down, make them nice and big this time, put them on top. I refresh, they're there, no problems. But if we do the, the list option, press enter, select the, uh, the entity, right click, do it. We can see that it's now gone onto the symbols higher option. All right, so this, it might not sound useful right now, just Trust me, it gets really useful. This lets you control what sheets you want to put these things onto, okay? But at the same time, protecting you from getting lazy and forgetting to change the sheets button. Okay, because once you're doing this a lot, you're gonna forget to come in here and make the active sheet to the sheet that you want every time, and you're gonna start clicking down, and all of a sudden you, you look back and you go, oh, hey, I forgot that's on the wrong sheet, nothing is working, I need to redo it. You don't have to worry about it. CC3 Plus protects you from that. We can see here everything went onto the symbol sheet. 
All right, they're all going to get the symbols special effects when we turn them on. All right, they get a nice shadow effect. You'll notice that these ones didn't because I didn't set one up. That's fine. All right, but if I want to, understanding how this works is really important. If I want to put them onto a different one, I can by knowing that I need to manipulate the name of the sheet that I create in order to move it. So look, I hope this makes sense to you guys. Um, I hope that it, you can see how useful this could become. Um, the deeper you get into mapping, you know, you might come along and make something that's, you know, absolutely massive. This will help you stay on control. And just so you're aware, it works for anything that's got symbols in the name. So for example, symbols, torches, I can come along here, tick, 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 um, and then we'll do a list. Select everything, right click, do it, and you can see everything came to symbols, torches. All right, so once again, that asterisk in the symbols name, it's just a wildcard, okay? It's a wildcard that says this, this is going to go into this sheet, and the wildcard lets me to manipulate that a little bit further and have a bit more control. Really powerful functionality. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, I hope you found that uh, useful and interesting. Um, it's certainly one of the more advanced features that's incredibly frustrating for new users. Um, and it's just one of those things that once you understand how it works, you realize that it's actually a, a really important function and really, really super useful as you move forward in your mapping careers. So hope it helps. Um, if it does help, please do subscribe to my channel. I'm on a bit of a drive at the moment to increase my subscriber numbers. I need to get above a thousand for YouTube to care about me again. So uh, if you can help me do that, I'd be greatly appreciative. And if you've got any questions, you can always catch up with me at the, uh, the Facebook Campaign Cartographer 3 user group. Um, there's a good, you know, we're, we're heading on to 700 people. So come and join us. Um, there's there's lots of people offering their advice, um, lots offering help. Um, there's new guys asking for help. There's old guys offering it. It's just, it's such a good community. It's growing more and more every day. So come and join us. I'll uh, put a link in the uh, description below. And apart from that, have a great day and I will speak to you on the forums.